Oh, it is about to get toxic. But before it does, real quick, I just wanna explain how all this is gonna work. If you've seen any of my other ranking videos, it's pretty straightforward. I take all of the theme songs of whatever I'm talking about and put them all in a list in order from worst to best, analyzing each one as I go and giving my reasoning for putting, you know, whatever, wherever. This list though is gonna be a little bit different because I feel like the point of this video is less about going through each theme and figuring out which is my favorite, and more about determining which has the best theme songs overall as a series. And to help me with this, boys, boys, I made a rubric. Remember these from English class? Music, animation, plot, and the almighty nostalgia factor are our four main categories here. Yes, in this video, we will actually be going through and grading every single one of these openings, one series at a time, in chronological order. Starting with the music category, and the four here would just be absolute heat. Some of the greatest anime music ever, basically. A three is what I like to call like, uh, like a cool vibe. Still a great song, very enjoyable, but not necessarily the best of the best. A two would be something I don't love, but I also don't hate. And a one would have to be something that actually makes me want to skip, which is rare. Never skip anime openings. If you do, I'll find you and I will kill you. A foreign animation would have to be something that leaves me utterly speechless. Cinema quality stuff. A three would be something that I still can't take my eyes off of, but I don't know, it, it would, it's just lacking something. You know, we'll get to it when we get to it. A two here, I guess, will be similar to a two in music. Something I don't hate, but I also don't love. And a one here would just be absolutely terrible. Like, like, who are you people? Story context, of course, matters whenever I'm ranking openings, so we got plot here as well. And a four here would be something that I remember as being peak fiction. A three here wouldn't be peak fiction, obviously, but it's still something that I associate with greatness. That One Piece, Bleach, or Naruto greatness. You feel me? A two here would be for stuff that's filler or feels like filler, and a one would have to just be a stain on the series, you know? Something that whenever the theme song comes on, all it does is remind you of how much the series has fallen. But don't worry, there's no Boruto openings here. And finally, we have the almighty nostalgia factor. Obviously the most objective part of this entire thing. After I go through each opening, I'll then take whatever the average score is for the series, and whichever series has the highest average score in the end, will be crowned the best of the big three. When it comes to theme songs, that is. Enough preamble though. We have 69 openings to go through here. Nice. So get comfortable. We're gonna be here for a while. It's time, boys. Time to rank every One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach opening from worst to best. Who has the best theme songs of the big three? It's time to find out. And we're starting with One Piece. Let's go. Talk about starting off strong, man. When it comes to vibes, One Piece starts off ridiculously overpowered. Out of all the big three series, this is the best first opening and it's not even a competition. This song is just so unique too, so tailor-made for One Piece, it honestly pits itself into a league of its own compared to Naruto and Bleach. This opening is as iconic as the Dragon Ball theme. The Sailor Moon theme, you know? Over 20 years later and it still slaps just as hard as it did in 1999. Of course the animation here is somewhat a product of its time, but this was the golden era of One Piece animation after all. I also really just love the long panning camera shots that's used a lot in this opening, especially the one of all the straw hats fighting on this random ship. The beginning of One Piece is a bit slow, but the beauty of One Piece openings is that they last a really long time. So even though we got a Syrup Village over here, we also have a Baratier and an Arlong Park over there. All fours across the board, right off the bat for One Piece, man. Once again, very strong start. This opening will live on until the end of time. One of my One Piece hot takes has always been that I never really liked Believe. I don't know. I think the singing here is just alright, and I still don't really like the way the vocals are mixed. 
But that's about the only issues I have with this opening, really. Besides that, this is just more classic content from One Piece's golden years. Immediately, another four when it comes to plot and nostalgia because this was the Alabasta saga, man. Even before I was a hardcore One Piece fan, back when I used to only watch the four kids version just because I was waiting for Dragon Ball GT to come on afterwards, I knew about Alabasta and I was a huge fan of Crocodile. It's still one of the best arcs pre-time skip, but honestly, which arc isn't the best pre-time skip? Definitely Thriller Bark. But anyway, I still don't really know whether I like this times four picture in picture stuff going on here or not, but uh, hey, at least it's unique. This opening just feels really Y2K-ish, you know? Like it sounds and looks dated, but in the best way possible, man, the 2000s are great. Man, I could I could give this opening a five in nostalgia. That's how strong it is, man. Very personal to me for reasons that I won't get into here. We don't have time for tangents. Long story short, it was a really tough time for me a few years ago, but at least I had one piece at the time, which I was finally binging for the first time after putting it off for so long. Jaya and Skypea, man. These arcs aren't, I guess, as iconic as, for example, like an Alabasta or Water 7, but man, have these arcs aged like a fine wine. The animation in this opening, though, oh, oh, once again, man, Golden Era One Piece is undefeated. Just look at these freeze frame shots of all the straw hats, man. They're absolutely gorgeous. The shading! So what if this opening spoils the end of Alabasta? The song as well is just a wonderful little tune, man. Another song that I can only really hear in a series like One Piece. It sounds very nautical. Yeah, that's a good word. Nautical. Not as good as Hikari A in my opinion, but pretty damn close, am I right? Once again, Sky P is goaded. Insert Anel as Eminem joke here. This is still the golden era of One Piece animation. The last of the big four, unfortunately. I'm not gonna say the song carries this opening, but it's about as far as a four can get when it comes to music. This song is absolutely exquisite, man. Real luau type music. You gotta love these bongos. The animation here is very nostalgic, no doubt, but this is definitely the slowest and most laid back of the original four, I think. I'm not saying that any of this is a negative thing, but you know, we don't get any big action sequences of all of the straw hats here, unfortunately. It's still a top tier One Piece opening just off sheer nostalgia factor though. Like, come on, man. Even G8 as a rare One Piece filler arc was great. Like literally, I don't even really consider this filler. Yo, all of these pre-time skip openings hit so different, man. I bent, <clears throat> my voice cracked there. I binged One Piece in like six months, and by the end of it, all these pre-time skip openings felt like they were from 10 years ago. I just really love the scale of everything in this opening, the backgrounds, man. A lot of these scenes look like they were filmed on a lens that makes everything look so much zoomed out, which is obviously the point. After all, One Piece is an epic story about an epic journey throughout an epic world. Kokoro no Chizu is still one of my favorite songs from the series, man. Obviously, the best part here is when the chorus comes in and we get this montage of moments from Water 7. The horns, man, the horns. Another goaded opening from One Piece, man. So far, it's like... We just haven't missed, yo. We haven't missed. Bro, I'm starting to think this is unfair for Bleach and Naruto, man. Like, you could take just the pre time skip openings and it will be a tough day. Remember when I said that Baratia and Arlong Park was when I fell in love with One Piece? Well, Water 7 in Eni's Lobby was when I got down on one knee and decided I wanted to spend the entire rest of my life with the series. Robin was finally rescued from the clutches of Cypher Pole, and I married H. Ro Oda. This opening matches the climax to the Water 7 saga perfectly, man. My favorite scene is Frankie vs. Fukuro. You can really feel the intensity here. It's another perfect score from One Piece, man. What do you want me to do? Another one. It's just, it's really just a shame that this opening was used for like 15 episodes. That's like half of the amount of episodes that usually go to an opening, which sucks. Crazy, crazy rebel star. I'm a crazy rebel star. 
the first of the over two minute long One Piece openings that we're still getting to this very day. The animation in this one isn't terrible. It moves at that pretty slice of life, lackadaisical pace, but there are still a lot of really charming scenes here. The scene of Sanji rescuing Robin from this dinosaur attacking the crew's campsite for one, and also, you gotta love these references to spreads from the manga, which I forgot to mention in the previous one. Still, here I think is the point in the anime where things really started to stiffen up a bit, if you get what I mean. The song is still great, prime One Piece, nautical vibes, nautical. And the plot around this time, I mean, my god man. Luffy versus Lucci in the conclusion to the raid on Eni's lobby. Everything post Eni's lobby with Garp showing up and explaining the truth about the world. The funeral for the going Mary. Ace versus Blackbeard. The opening itself isn't mind blowing or anything, but man is this still one of the best sections of One Piece. <laughs> All right, boys, we have arrived. One Piece has been on an absolute tear so far with these openings. Naruto and Bleach are sweating bullets right now. However, One Piece is certainly not perfect. Even though I respect all the people that defend this arc till they die, Thriller Bark fucking sucked, man. Let's be real. Let's just, it never needed to be that long. This is one of the arcs I look at now because, you know, Oda's rushing through all these things in the manga recently. Like, we really could have been saving some time here, Oda. Maybe if you would have shaved off, like, I don't know, 20 chapters from this 48 chapter long arc, maybe we could have gotten that kid flashback. Maybe we could have got that Kaido flashback, huh? This opening in isolation is still really, really good. I said all that to just get to this point. Luffy looks kind of wide here, which is weird, but this opening definitely hits a different gear with these backgrounds and environments, man. This treasure here looks amazing. I also really like how Frankie looks in this opening. Like, like he knows this is his first One Piece OP and he's just like so proud of it. Like, yeah, yeah, boys, you know the vibes. Look out, new straw hat alert. The first major blow to One Piece. I've always hated this song, man. Like, I, I do not do not like it at all if you wanted to give us a we are opening to celebrate 10 years of the one piece anime then just give us the original the original was fine not just that but this song also feels like it goes on forever this is the first time we get a two and a half minute opening for we are so they had to play the chorus three times in a row to fit the length of the opening the animation here man uh yeesh yeesh even the seagulls here in the beginning they look like puppets on a string like not even actual birds the only saving grace for the legacy of this opening is the greatness of the saba odi arc and seeing all the supernovas together for once and kizuru kizuru is cool but besides all that comfortably my least favorite one piece opening All right, now we're talking. Now we're talking, yeah. A much groovier, much more original track from Toho Shinki this time around. And some people may be shocked at me scoring this a two in music, but I got another pretty spicy One Piece take for you. Share the World isn't even in my top 10 One Piece openings. I don't hate the song, but I also don't think it's the best. And referring to the rubric, this is exactly what this grade is here for. Whenever I see people praising this opening, I think it's just a nostalgia thing, you know? Nostalgia for Luffy punching that Tenryu Bito in the face, Kuma splitting up the Straw Hats, Amazon Lily, and the beginning of Impel Down. The first few seconds of this opening are still very triggering for me. Trust me, I get it. But, hey man, I stand by what I said. This is another One Piece opening that isn't bad, but the song just sounds generic as hell. It's like we've been on this 10 year long streak of incredibly unique music for this groundbreaking series, and now all of a sudden One Piece just sounds like your ordinary slice of life comedy series. The animation here is just incredible though. So many more manga spreads that are animated here, which you gotta love. This scene of Luffy running through Impel Down is just jaw dropping, and the Marine Ford scene here at the end still gets me hyped. Impel Down is probably my favorite arc, and all of One Piece? Uh, I don't know, it's, it's definitely up there with Water 7 in Eni's Lobby. The tone of this opening I feel is just a little bit off, but it's definitely one that I still very much cherish and hold close to my heart. This was the easiest part of my six month binge for sure. Sayuko, 
Another very obvious perfect square here, man. I mean, how could you not? It's weird because this opening is so different from literally every other One Piece opening in terms of sound and structure, but as it should be because we don't got time for goofing off on a random beach somewhere or just enjoying this wonderful grand adventure that we're on. No, just despair. Pain and despair. I love all of these character emos that we get in this opening, man. This animation is so clean, bro. I could watch these on repeat all day. In fact, I did. The first time I benched Marine for it, I was averaging like 20 episodes a day. It was lit. This is one of those openings that I don't think I need to go on about for too long. Any One Piece fan knows that this is one of the peakest arcs in the entire series. And even though many other arcs in One Piece have dark and depressing moments, you can just feel the entire tone of the series shift in a major way. And the emotions just keep flowing in, man. While this opening doesn't have those beautiful character emotes from the last opening, and the plot around this time has slowed down significantly in the aftermath of Marine Ford, fight together, man. Oh, this opening kind of feels like a Marine Ford hangover. The theme song for Luffy and all the Whitebeard pirates to bounce back to in the wake of losing two of the best damn pirates that ever did pirate, man. I always go to this song whenever I'm having a rough day, you know? It's that uplifting. And while the visuals here aren't mind blowing, they don't really need to be. They match the tone here perfectly, just as emotional as the song is. Again, just like with One Day, you really feel the tone shift of the series here. This opening is utterly sublime. Back to regular upbeat One Piece now, and what a way to return, man. What a way to kick off the post time skip new world section of the story. Right off the bat, my favorite section of the opening is the scene of each of the straw hats taking out a bunch of Marines. Just look at the camera work. And then we finish it off with this wonderful ensemble shot at the end with an explosion as the backdrop, courtesy of Frankie. This really does feel like a reboot for the series, man. It feels like a major reset button after the events at Marine Ford and at Saba Odi. Honestly, the only thing keeping this from being a perfect score is that Fishman Island was just an okay arc. I would never say it feels like filler because it's an arc that's too important to the series and also something we've been building up to since Saba Odi, but it was just okay. The new Fishman Pirates were okay. This opening lasted a long time, man. Over 70 episodes, but it still never gets old. That's honestly a testament to how good it is. No matter how great this opening may be, I always forget that Punk Hazard exists. Which is crazy because this is the point in the story where the alliance with Law is formed and where we also start building up to Wano with Momonosuke and Kinemon being introduced, but I don't know, man. Punk Hazard is just such an afterthought. And I also remember really starting to feel the fatigue around this time when I was binging too. Just like Thriller Bark, I feel like it's another arc that did not need to be as long as it was. That aside though, this opening is beautiful. More animated manga spreads, you gotta love it. I've always loved this scene at the beginning, starting out as a sketch and then coloring in the scene. It really is quite satisfying. <laughs> Another rare miss when it comes to One Piece themes. I didn't hate it at first. I just think the chorus of this song is rather obnoxious. That might just be me though. And this short dialogue between Luffy and Blackbeard was cool at the beginning, but I think I can see why they never attempted something like this again. Eventually, after you've seen it enough times, it kind of just turns into like when the DJ talks too much over the song, like just, like just play the song, man. Get on with it, please. Everything else about this opening is really good though. Everything seems very shiny in this opening. Even though I was feeling a lot of fatigue around this time, 700 episodes in at this point, Dressrosa is an arc that's aged really well for me. In fact, I think it aged really well for a lot of people. And Sabo coming back, top 10 moment in the series for sure. This opening lasted a long time too, 58 episodes. That's almost the entirety of Dragon Ball GT, which is why I think I eventually got really tired of the song. But hey, it's still more memorable than Hands Up, that's for sure. And this Robin scene is crazy, man. One of my all-time favorite One Piece openings, man, that will forever 
bring me back to the horrors of the animation and the pacing in the anime around this time. It wasn't all bad. Gear Forth, God Usopp, Law and Dofi's flashbacks, Ichidai Sansen, Daisen Sekai, all that good stuff. But that goddamn birdcage, man. Putting that to the side, though, this has to be my favorite showcase of the Straw Hats in any of these openings, man. Just look at the crew. Look at how great Usopp and his crew looks here. This is post time skip One Piece openings at their greatest right here, man. Showing off these epic cataclysmic battles with huge stakes in the world, but also having that silly adventurous sides of classic One Piece nestled in there as well. Phenomenal opening, man. I thought Dressrosa would never end. <laughs> This is an opening I've never really known how to feel about. For me, it's always just been there, you know? It kind of feels like a filler opening, which is a bit unfair to the arc that it was used for. Zo is actually really great. Raizo is safe! Hey man, at least it's Hiroshi Kitadani. I still don't think I would call this my favorite Kitadani song though. The animation here is kind of weird in parts too. I think they may have accidentally replaced Robin's neck with Frankie's here. Goddamn. The fight scene against the Beast Pirates towards the end, though, is pretty clean. It's a nice tease for a couple of arcs down the line, but other than that, this opening is just okay. It's all right. This opening just makes me sad, man. We didn't get an opening specifically for the Luffy Usopp confrontation at Water 7. This opening literally is the theme song for Sanji's whole internal struggle for the majority of Whole Cake Island. The theme song for Luffy waiting, waiting for Sanji to come back because he wouldn't eat anybody else's food. You can't tell me this opening doesn't trigger you at least just a little bit. This was the moment where I could say I got rehooked into the series during my initial binge. The whole Sanji character arc here was incredible, man definitely snapped me out of the rut that I was in around this time. While I don't feel like the animation in this opening is better than Superpowers, the next one, the song here is definitely superior. This is an opening that just hits different for us Sanji fans, man. A lot of people don't like this song and I couldn't disagree more. I think there's a lot of Hard Knock Days energy with this opening here. Not only that, but this opening is freaking beautiful, man. Just so many gorgeous and really interesting scenes here. Luffy versus Katakuri, Carrot's Sulong transformation, the Germa scene at the very end. This is so hype! The anime around this time suffered a lot from birdcage syndrome, what with it feeling like Big Mom chasing the Thousand Sunny was an entire arc unto itself, but Luffy versus Katakuri is still my favorite fight in the entire series. And I'm also a Sanji fan. This was a Sanji arc. I might just be a little bit biased. Spoiler alert, all the openings from here on out are getting fours in animation because, come on man. The Wano arc has just been on a whole other level for the past three or four years. Like, even bad episodes still look like some of the best One Piece has ever looked. This opening is like a huge milestone for me because this was where we were at in the anime when I'd finally caught up. Like episode 902, 903, it was around the time Luffy fought against the sumo wrestler guy. It is just impossible to take your eyes off this opening, bruh. It moves at 100 miles an hour, and there's honestly too much here to even try to cherry pick what my favorite scene might be. It's all 10 out of 10 stuff, man, back to back to back. And to go with the new animation style, we also have a new song by the GOAT, Hiroshi Kitadani. And while I don't think it's on the level of something like We Go or We Are, it's definitely better than we can. It's a new era of One Piece, and this opening makes you feel it in a major way. Surprisingly, I think I might like this opening over, over the top. That was weird. I think this might be my favorite Wano opening out of the bunch, to be honest. We're deep into the paint era of One Piece currently, and I miss dreaming on so much, man. We get so many characters packed into this opening, man. The Straw Hats, obviously. The Beast Pirates, the Big Mom Pirates, Orochi, Law, Kid, the Nine Scabbards, Hiyori, Momo, Odin, Whitebeard, Roger, etc. Between this and Over the Top, you can immediately feel just how busy the Wano arc is. Some would say to its detriment, but that's another conversation for a different day. This opening is an absolute gem, man. Great song top tier animation, really colorful as well. And a lot of people hate Wano Act 2, but hey, 
Odin still has one of the best flashbacks in the entire story. Facts. This is the current One Piece opening, and the song still hasn't grown on me yet. It's been almost a year, and I still don't like it. I still, I still don't like it. This is probably going to last for the rest of Wano too. This is supposed to be the climax to the raid on Onigashima, one of the biggest, most earth-shaking battles against two Yonko, two of the strongest characters in the entire series, and this is our theme song. I can't throw hands to this man. The animation, though, my. God, man! I feel like even compared to the previous two openings, this is just ridiculous, bruh. Like, almost overwhelming. It just doesn't stop. The Toby Ropo look cool as hell here. Ace and Yamato look cool as hell here. Kaido looks amazing here. Just like Over the Top and Dreaming On. There's just too much going on here for me to pick out my favorite scenes. Oh, yo! Yo, in the anime around this time. Oh, the, yo, the anime has just been unstoppable in 2022, really, man. Let's talk about it. I still don't like the song that much, but this opening, and specifically this section of Wano, will undoubtedly go down as some of the best shit that the One Piece anime has ever produced. Every single time I see this opening, it always takes me back to when I saw the premiere of the very first episode of Bleach on Adult Swim back in the day. Bleach is just too cool, man. This opening is just so goddamn cool. From the music to the outfits to the urban aesthetic in general, this opening is the reason why Bleach is still, without a doubt, the coolest of the big three if nothing else. This is still early days Bleach, so like with early One Piece and early Naruto, it is a product of its time in certain aspects. But even saying that, there's still so many neat camera tricks here and really interesting storyboarding. The beginning of Bleach is also very slow, kind of like One Piece. It's a huge reason why I kind of gave the series a cold shoulder for so long. So I had to give it a two in plot. It really doesn't start picking up until Renji and Byakuya arrive. But in isolation, this opening is definitely a certified hood classic. I always remember this opening for being the point where I, and I'm sure many others, started falling in love with Bleach. As I said, the beginning of Bleach is pretty slow, pretty monster of the weekish. you know? It was just Ichigo and his friends protecting Katakura Town from Hollows. Once Renji and Byakuya show up to take away Rukia, literally we go from that to probably the best arc in the entire series. Everyone loves the Soul Society arc, man, and D-Techno Life represents the majority of that arc. Ichigo versus Renji, Ichigo versus Kenpachi, the whole who done it story surrounding the fifth division and Aizen's death, quote unquote. Not only has the song always been an absolute banger, but again, it serves as the moment where I got hooked on to Bleach. The animation as well in this opening is incredibly smooth. This one scene of Ichigo and his crew running up the steps of Sokyo Ku Hill blows me away every time. It's an opening that isn't quite as busy as D Techno Life is. It's still a great song for the climax of the Soul Society arc, though. The final confrontation between Ichigo and Byakuya. I love me some metal music, so the screaming at the very end of the OP has always been my favorite part. I had to give the animation in this opening a two because, again, comparing it to D Techno Life, there's definitely a lot less movement here. The majority of this opening is filled with static shots of Ichigo and the gang. It is still the climax to the Soul Society arc, though. Who doesn't remember Aizen, Gin, and Tosen defecting from the Seireite? So it has that going for it, but yeah. Good opening, just not exactly as thrilling, I guess, as D-Techno Life. I don't have much nostalgia at all. For this opening here. I've only seen the Bount arc recently, but Bleach Filler isn't bad at all though. They honestly feel like extra movie ideas that they just couldn't devote the budget to, I guess. Nothing in this opening is inoffensive. I really enjoy these outfits the characters get to wear for a portion of it. This is early 2000s tween fashion at its finest, but this definitely can't really compete with any of the other Bleach openings that I hold near and dear to my heart. <laughs> Many 
This has always been one of my favorite songs in Bleach, man. The perfect, the perfect kind of vibe for another rescue arc. Which makes sense. This is kind of the beginning of the sequel to the Rukia rescue mission. This time instead with Orihime as the damsel in distress. We got a beautiful sunset scene here, which of course gives bonus points for me. Ichigo facing off against his inner hollow. Orihime's hairpin burning away here, man. It all feels so, so cinematic. And the filters thrown over all of this really gives it a sense of grittiness. That prime bleach aesthetic from still early on in the series, back when everything felt a whole lot spookier, you know? I still had to give this only a two in plot because, again, we hadn't quite got to the Orihime rescue mission yet, and there was still a lot of Bount Arc stuff in here as well. But, hey, like I said, still, still a top tier opening, for sure. You know, I was never a fan of this song. I can't deny its memorability in Bleach's legacy, if only for the catchiness alone. But I've, yeah, I've never really been a fan of the singing here. It sounds very nasally. The visuals definitely make up for it though. Not only is the grainy black and white film filter unique here and also gives it a sense of grittiness like Rolling Star, but there's also just some more really great camera work here. The duplicate zoom out shots of all the Gote 13 and then Aizen and the Espada are fantastic. And this running scene is also really great. I love the sudden jump cut to this wider shot of the Shinigami running through Waco Mundo. The plot picks up a lot around this time as well, with Grim Jao finally getting involved and Ichigo learning how to control his inner hollow. Overall, this opening to me has always been a great one that kind of gets weighed down by the song. Not gonna lie. The full version of this song does have a wonderful little guitar section in the middle of it, which is great for Waco Mundo and all of its Spanish themes. Another one of my favorite songs in Bleach. Back when I ranked all the openings, I had this ranked at number three. It's Asian Kung Fu Generation. Come on, it's it's extremely hard to miss with these guys. Watching this opening now though, and actually grading it category by category, it is just all music and Grimjow, really, as the reasons why this opening has been one of my favorites for so long. I'm just now realizing how many times we have to cut away to show these credits on what I think is supposed to be a bed of flames. Again though, man, the Ichigo Grimjow trilogy, one of the best fights in Bleach, probably Ichigo's greatest rival. Overall, I have a lot of great memories of binging Bleach a few years ago and just realizing the kind of greatness I was missing out on here. Again, Bleach filler is all right. Definitely nowhere near as bad as Naruto filler can be. I've watched the Amagai arc maybe once, all the way through, and you could put a gun to my head, I still won't be able to remember what happened. So I give it a one in nostalgia for that. And also because even though Grimjaw was defeated by this point, there was a lot of stuff happening back in Waco Mundo that this opening took us away from. Yes, of course I skipped this arc when I was binging my first time through, but one thing I could never knock this opening for though, it's its animation. This was when Bleach made the transition from 4x3 to 16x9 widescreen. This opening is without a doubt movie grade quality as the rubric says, and the song isn't that bad either. This is another opening that is amazing in isolation, but I'm sure it gives people a lot of bad memories, you know, with the whole Waco Mundo interruption and whatnot. Before I even started this video, I knew this was a perfect score. Even before I could call myself a Bleach fan, I was a fan of this opening. Plenty of memories of catching random episodes of Bleach on random Saturdays at midnight, not knowing a lick of what was happening in the story, but the opening was just so damn good, man. Just look at the shading, man. Listen to the bass melody, bro. Waco Mundo had finally started back up again around this time too. Zyalaparo versus Miyori, Kenpachi versus Noitora, Aizen invading Katakura Town, the turn back the pendulum arc as well. Oh, I almost forgot. This was the beginning of the climax to the entire Arankar saga. Everything we've been building up to since Aizen defected at the end of the Soul Society arc. This will always be the idea of Bleach that I have in my head. Everything that I just said about Valonica. You can throw that throw that on this one too. Visually, this opening is like Velonica, but 
beautified, almost like for a girl's anime. Shoujo Velonica, if you will. It has the same kind of structure, just cutting the various still shots of all the Shinigami. All this art is really clean. It almost looks like the newer art style from the war arc, if you ask me. Let's be real though, this scene of Rukia and Orihime, man, deserves a four all by itself. Come on, bruh. This scene right here turned me into a man. In context to the timeline of the story, the battle in fake Karakura Town was underway, and it was really cool finally seeing the top three of Spada in action, but obviously this was only really the first act of this epic three-part final battle against Aizen. Some of these episodes did drag, not gonna lie. Again, I skipped all the filler when I did my first binge of Bleach, so this opening doesn't really make me feel any kind of way. It, it doesn't give me any of those sparks, you know, in my heart. However, I think this song is extremely underrated. This is fire. A solid four for me in music because I've actually gone out of my way to add this song to the rotation. The animation in this opening is fine. It isn't bad. But obviously, this is a bit of a step down from Shoujo S and Velonica. Like... Come on, boys. This boob animation is pitiful. Like the other filler arcs, obviously I've gone back and watched them. And again, not that bad. Zong Pato spirits coming back to life, trying to kill their sword wielders. Also involving the Kuchki clan. Yes, please. It's really weird how I've kind of fallen out of love with this song. At one point, this was my favorite song in all of Bleach, and yet somehow, sitting here now, I just, I just can't bring myself to give the song a four, man. Look at the animation. Just a look at how much shit is happening on screen at all times. The clash between Ichigo and Ukiyora at the very end is incredible too. Ukiyora is one of my favorite antagonists in Bleach, so I was locked all the way in for Ichigo's final battle with him. Finally! to rescue Orihime. This was a spectacular mini culmination of the rescue Orihime arc that exists within this larger Arankar slash defeat Aizen arc. You can really feel it with this opening, let me tell you. I don't know what it is, but I just can't put this song on the same tier as Velonica and Asterix, man. But one thing's for sure, here in that first change, it will never not give me butterflies. <laughs> Another opening that was so close to getting that perfect score, and it really should, in all honesty. Purely as an opening, like musically and visually, it's a 10 out of 4, if you ask me. But this is charisma, come on, we gotta add some personal context to all this. And boy, did the final battle with Aizen get absolutely butchered by filler, man. We got a lot longer flashbacks, Hellverse was dropping around this time, so we had to promote that movie, and so many side stories. So... So many side stories. And another side story. Even the episode knew that there were too many side stories. Oh my god, Mugetsu was cool as hell though, bro. Come on, man. Ooh. This opening is the stuff of legend in the Bleach community, man, and rightfully so. The animation in this thing is like Velonica, but on steroids. Another opening that doesn't look out of place at all with the newer animation style. The song is amazing. Try doing push-ups to Rambu No Melody. Fire. To the boys that were watching week to week, I have no idea how you guys didn't commit seppuku. Oof. Really, if it wasn't for the animation here, this would have definitely been the lowest graded opening probably in this entire video. I do really enjoy the unique look to this opening and this entire section of the Shinigami fighting each other is just otherworldly. Like honestly, it's hard to believe that mere mortals were able to create this, but yeah. Uh, I don't know what the consensus is in the community for this opening, but this is definitely my least favorite filler arc from the series. Doppelganger battles can be so tough to sit through already when they're just the plot of one episode. An entire arc of it? I'm cool. And actually, I, I think I hate the song too. I just think the song is pretty unremarkable. Like, it kind of just becomes background noise, you know? The animation definitely carries here. I don't want to just hate on the full bring arc because I feel like it's a tired take. But man, even in the manga, this did feel like a filler arc. By the end, it gets pretty good, but in the anime, particularly, 
It was so boring, man. It was so bad, I actually decided to just read the manga version instead. And that was way better, let me tell you. Once again, the anime, the actual TV show here, holds this opening back a little bit, but hey, not for nothing, it is still a really sweet finale to Bleach's original run. The montage of the episode number cards gets me every time, man. It's very satisfying. The song as well really just makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. This opening is like one final group hug for the Bleach anime before its 10 year hiatus. Oh, and also execution is there too, I guess. Somebody in the comment section of my Bleach ranking video called this opening mid and whoever you are, sir, what are you on about? Maybe it's recency bias, but already I have so much nostalgia for this opening. I've been watching a lot of these episodes with the homie who's also been into Bleach for a really long time and it's just been so much fun, man. Right now we're only 11 episodes into it and every week it's an absolute movie. Literally though, these episodes look like movies. I've been really rekindling those old Toonami vibes from back when me and my cousins would all link up to watch Naruto when we were kids. I cannot wait to see how this song makes me feel like years down the line when all of this is over and we've moved on, you know? Do I even need to talk about the animation here? The red filter I can see being a little bit of a divisive thing, but with or without it, you cannot deny the incredible camera work here, as well as just the sheer detail and crispness. Honestly, words can't even really explain certain aspects of this opening. This is more than just another beautiful anime OP. To put it simply, this opening is like a victory lap for Bleach. How did we end up in this timeline? This was never a bad opening to me. I just never really viewed this as the Naruto theme song, I guess. It's a pretty low key introduction to the series if you ask me, comparing it to Bleach and One Piece. I still give it a three in music and animation though because I do enjoy the song and this one scene of Team 7 fighting a bunch of random goons is smooth as hell even 20 years later. The Land of Waves arc should be incredibly nostalgic for any OG Naruto fan. Zabuza's speech still hits different, but this definitely isn't the peak of part one. This opening feels like a warm up. This is the peak of part one. Just that fast. A foreign music, one of the most iconic songs from the entire series, probably also one of the most iconic songs in all of anime. A foreign animation is definitely a product of its time in certain aspects, but come on, man. This spin around shot of all the Genin teams is undefeated. A foreign plot, the tuning exams is my favorite arc in part one. Top three of the entire series as well. And obviously a foreign nostalgia because this was prime tsunami, man, in the mid to late 2000s. I'll dare anybody to hate this OP. We can squabble. I'll defend this until my dying day. This is the shit that made me a diehard Naruto fan. I gave this opening a two in music because I don't dislike the song, but it's definitely never my go-to when assembling a Naruto playlist or anything. This is still peak part one though. The finals of the tuning exams, man. The climax of Orochimaru's invasion on the Leaf Village. Even though I'm a bit indifferent towards this song and always have been, it'll forever be stuck in my head because I go back and rewatch these episodes at least once a year. And the song is very catchy, if nothing else. Even though this opening does get me nostalgic for my first time watching the sub, it still can't compete with Haruka Kanata, man. The alternate version of this opening that was used for the dub version of all of these episodes. Again, back in those golden tsunami days. Shout out to the Naruto Mundo event. Real ones know what I'm talking about. Spoiler alert, but yeah, expect all of these first six openings from Naruto to have fours in nostalgia, besides Kanashimi Wo, because again, man, Toonami was just so, so goaded, man. I feel like if it was airing on Toonami or was Toonami adjacent like Bleach, it's an instant plus two in nostalgia points, man. Come on. Another one of my favorite theme songs and another probably most iconic theme song from Naruto of all time. 
one of the most memeable as well. The Tsunade arc I feel still isn't talked about enough in terms of how great it actually is, but I guess that's just what happens when it's sandwiched between two of the peakest arcs in all of fiction. It's unfortunate. And I guess I gave it a three in animation too because the art doesn't blow me away or anything, but I really like the creative direction of this opening. You gotta love these kimonos, man. Another all fours across the board for this one, man, because even though I think I still like the tuning exams better, what a week to week experience this was as a kid, man. I've already mentioned it before, talking about linking up with my cousins and watching Naruto every week. It was amazing. The animation in this opening, man, this is some of the best shit that part one Naruto has to offer. Even the CGI here doesn't look that bad all these years later. I don't even think I really need to elaborate on the music and the plot, you know? We all know what this is, man. Peak part one. The opening slaps every single time. The nostalgia is there for this OP as well, man. This was the final battle between Naruto and Sasuke. Or at least the first final battle. This is also, of course, though, the beginning of filler hell. Some of them aren't that bad. But let's be real, man. Most of us just had a final volley hangover and we're still watching, hoping one day that we would get some kind of next step. Still got like a hundred more episodes until we get there. Oddly, it's another one of those songs that I've kind of fallen out of love with over the years. I definitely don't dislike it, though. And again, the nostalgia is real. I feel like the animation is what really carries this opening, man. The shaky camera always adds intensity, man. Just as Karuka Kanata or the opening before this. Overall, man, pretty good opening. Really high energy. I've always felt like this song was slept on, man. I remember first finding this opening on Mega Uploads back in the day. I was kind of checked out of Naruto by this point, but I found this compilation of all the openings from part one and was surprised to see how long the anime still ran after the end of the Sasuke arc. Immediately, this opening stuck out to me. The art style here in the first half of this opening has always been goaded. If any series deserves a proper live action adaptation anymore, I mean, it has to be Naruto, right? The second half of the opening is pretty basic though, both versions. You can tell they just like blew their entire load on the first half. And obviously it's dragged down a lot in plot and nostalgia here because again, at best, these filler arcs are like an okay Naruto movie. It's crazy because I actually used to really like this opening when I was a kid. Flow is so synonymous with Naruto, man. They've brought us a bunch of bangers throughout the years. This isn't one of them, unfortunately. Again, I don't like overtly dislike the song, but it's also one of those songs where you go and listen to the full version of it. And once you pass like the opening length part, the part that you're familiar with, you're just kind of done with the song. Like, all right. I don't really want to play with you anymore. Out of all the openings from the filler hell section of part one Naruto, I had to give this one a one in nostalgia. Definitely my least revisited section of the series. Nobody remembers this section of Naruto. No pun intended. Visually, this opening is fine, I guess. It definitely doesn't stand out like the one before this or the one after this, though. Just a pretty middle of the road opening for a pretty dead section of Naruto by one of my favorite bands, to be fair, not one of my favorite songs by them, unfortunately. Instantly a four when it comes to animation, bruh, just for the concept alone. I think I said this before, but this OP really feels like a graduation video, you know, that they would play at the academy or at like prom or something, if prom was a thing in Konoha Gakure. Hey, this is also the opening that says nigga. Again, not much to speak of here in regards to plot, but this was the end for part one. So the nostalgia is through the roof, even if it's only for like one episode. Honestly, that's really just a testament to how great the opening is. It's so sentimental, man. So heartwarming. Still to this day, I feel like this is the superior, like final theme song for the series compared to Kara no Kokoro. Kokoro! 
Now, this is a much better theme song for the Naruto series, man, than Rocks ever could be. I was so tight when they chose Bluebird over this in the 20th anniversary special thing. I feel like, similar to We Are in Asterisk, not only is Hero's comeback a perfect fit for the theme song of the series, but it also kind of feels like the spirit of the main character as well. These drums are loud and in your face, man, similar to Naruto's energy and personality a lot of the time. And the guitar, bro, it sounds sounds like the raging fire of the QB's chakra welling up inside of Naruto. It's amazing. This opening uses a lot of experimental animation styles as well. More than anything, though, this will forever take me back to when I first discovered Shippuden. I don't know how many times I've watched this opening scene of Naruto and Sakura running through Orochimaru's hideout searching for Sasuke. You are my friend. I, I don't know you, man. It's always bothered me that the full version of this song sounds so different from the opening. It's like the odd future effect from My Hero Academia, but at least there's a section of that song that sounds like the opening. The full version of Distance is like a complete re-record. While the song doesn't slap as hard as Hero's comeback, I feel like the animation really kicked it into another gear. These action scenes of the new Team 7 versus Kabuto and Orochimaru, these clouds moving in the sky, man, my god! Again, still not peak Shippuden just yet, but I do have tons of nostalgia watching this on Disney XD back in the day, for better or for worse, meeting Sai and Yamato for the first time, and even getting to see Sasuke again. All these episode titles have been burned into my brain for the rest of time. Thank you, Disney XD, and the rerun hell. And speaking of that Disney XD rerun hell, I got in a lot of trouble for dissing this OP in my first ranking video ever, the original Naruto ranking video from 2019. But I swear it was never because of the song, man. Every time I saw Shippuden on TV, for some reason, it always was a rerun of this section of the series. More specifically, the 12 Guardian Ninja arc. Even more specifically, it was this wind episode, man. This. Episode 55, when Naruto starts his training. A great moment, Naruto and Kakashi training together, but yo, literally every time it was on TV, it was this episode. PTSD aside, this opening I think is objectively good, yeah. The song is one of the best of the entire series. The animation here is really nice too. Some really great action here. Still though, this opening has been so overplayed for me, man. I'm sorry. I'm just, I've been scarred for life. I go to therapy for shit like this. The nostalgia once again takes a hit because Disney XD, all that good stuff. But hey, at least I don't mind watching this arc hundreds of times in a row. It's amazing. The Kakuzu fight, still probably the worst Akatsuki battle, let's be real. It's the one that had the least amount of heat to it. But it will forever be connected to the Hidon fight, which is one of the best Akatsuki fights that we have. Still Shikamaru's best moment to me, man. The animation in this opening isn't all that crazy. Definitely a step down from Bluebird, I would think. This one scene of Kakuzu taking on Izumo and Kotetsu feels like it's moving at half speed. And there's also that weird scene of Naruto at the end running, which they had to go back and fix. It's an opening that I've always loved for the song. That's pretty much it. Visually, it's kind of mid. This opening can't really touch the pain section of Shippuden. And even the war arc. Well, we've made it to the Sasuke Shippuden section of the story. This scene of Sasuke and Orochimaru gets me every time. And it's not because Orochimaru's pulling a Hasoka move here. This purple water, whatever weird concoction this is that Orochimaru created is just such a treat on the eyes, man. Big W for whoever added the after effects here. Even though there isn't much movement in this opening, it's still the best Naruto has ever looked. Still not quite peak Shippuden yet, but man is this section of the story nostalgic as hell. I'll always see this opening as an opening for Sasuke and not Naruto, you know? Kind of like how My Hero has this custom opening for their My Villain Academia portion of the story. I didn't instantly fall in love with the song, I do still think Bluebird is better. But regardless, it's still fire. Come on, this is, this is prime Shippuden right here. Another opening that I've always considered to be more for Sasuke than it is for Naruto. Definitely top 5 Naruto songs of all time. 
I don't care who you are. I wasn't watching the anime week to week around this time, but I do remember first seeing this opening, or I guess scenes of this opening, cut up in all kinds of different ways across YouTube. Sasuke versus Itachi, Jiraiya versus Pain, the grainy film section of the beginning of the opening, it's all undefeated. And yes, finally, we've reached the peak section of Shippuden that I've been hyping up this entire time. Sasuke versus Itachi, man, one of the most anticipated fights in all of manga, and still one of the most important battles of the entire series. The introduction of pain still sends shivers down my spine, man. And of course, rest in peace Jiraiya, man. Yeah, I mean, this is an all-time great Naruto opening. I would say it has a little bit of everything, but it kind of has a lot of bit of everything. I feel like anything less than a perfect score here is just blasphemous. Unlike Sign, which was an instant smash for everybody, I think this opening has kind of grown into its legendary status. The music here isn't anywhere near as intense as Sign was, which some people might see as underwhelming for the climax of Pain's assault. I kind of see this opening as more of a calm fury, you know? While Sign is kind of like the relentless torrent of rage driving Sasuke and somebody like Nagato to the lengths that they went to, Tomei Data Sekai, man, to me, kind of sounds like Naruto's will rebounding from all the tragedy and continuing to charge forward valiantly into battle the calm at the center of the tornado if you will i said all that to say man the song slaps the entire opening is just pain's assault on the village and the animation here has always been smooth as hell man even ino and hinata get in on the action here and it looks great you watch this opening and immediately you remember exactly where you were and how you felt watching just all of this destruction occur The visual concept alone for this opening is absolutely splendid. This has always been my favorite Nico Touches the Wall song as well. Yes, even over Not Even Sudden Rain Can Defeat Me. We're on a little bit of a, a lull, a come down here in the aftermath of Pain's invasion, but the Five Kage Summit was still very, very good. Here we have Sasuke at his sociopathic worst, watching him blind himself all in the name of vengeance with the entire Uchiha clan on his back. This was part of my dark period of Naruto when I took some time away from the series, so I had to give it a three in nostalgia, but I can never forget finally catching up on everything a couple of years after the fact all in preparation for the fourth great shinobi war. This is an opening that in isolation is one of the best for sure. Even out of isolation, to be honest. Another opening from my dark years of Naruto. I only really remember this from being in a playlist of all the Naruto openings at that time. This was like 2012. I never really cared for lovers, unfortunately, which is a shame because the animation here is some top notch stuff. I love the saturation in this scene of Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura. It's so it's so cold, so blue. And this scene of Gar versus Sasuke gives me goosebumps every time, man. It's just <sighs> Oh, how the tables have turned. I was going to give this a two in plot because there is a lot of filler, but the Donzo battle, the Team 7 reunion, Kisame versus Killer B, it all just barely saves it. But let me tell you, it felt like Naruto, Yamato, Guy, and the rest of that whole crew were never going to reach that island, man. Jesus Christ. Definitely a slow point in the anime for sure. <laughs> I always thought this opening was weird, but now knowing the context surrounding this, the 2011 tsunamis in Japan, it's kind of hard to hate on this opening. Again, another slow section of the anime, but we do still have Naruto versus Kurama here and the true story about the day he was born. Come on, man, just for that alone, just for Naruto talking to his mom, seeing Naruto and his mother's personalities bounce off of each other as worthy of a three. Kushina is definitely best mom. Again. The animation here is very wacky at times, very silly. I just find it interesting that Naruto, Sai, and Sakura have this secret ultimate team jutsu here, even though none of them can use lightning release all that well, if even at all. The song has a nice cool vibe to it as well, literally what the score is on the rubric, but that was never the thing keeping me from loving this OP after all these years. I was just an edgelord teenager that wanted everything to be as emo as Sign and Diver. That's it. A -N -S. A -N -S. 
I'm sorry, this opening will forever be a reminder of just how much of a slog the early section of the war was. There were a few cool things here and there, like Asuma coming back, the battle against Kikaku and Ginkaku, Konkuro using Sasori as a puppet was cool, but for the most part, this whole this whole confrontation section of the war, as the wiki calls it, it was such a slow start to an otherwise pretty great war arc. We'll get to it. I know some people enjoy the upbeat nature of this song, but for me, I'm sorry, man. After all these years of hearing it, it kinda, it's kinda just obnoxious. Definitely my least favorite song in all of Naruto. And the early war slump doesn't help the legacy of this opening at all. The only saving grace here is the animation. But besides that, definitely one of the weakest sections of the anime. I don't know what it is about this opening, but it's just so nostalgic to me, man. Like, I just really start to miss the series when I hear this. Maybe it's because this is when I finally started catching up to the series again. I used to sneak and watch these episodes on my phone in high school, and I still graduated, mom. Who said anime isn't educational? Even though this is still that early section of the war, and honestly, probably the more filler heavy section of the war, I really didn't mind all these side quests side quests with new characters like Pakura and Omoe, as well as underutilized characters like Neji and Shino. Naruto was finally making his way to the battlefield as well. We got to learn more about the Raikage and his relationship with his little brother, as well as Naruto's father. I give the animation here a two because even Totsugeki Rock, for as much as I hate it, I think still looks better. A lot of this looks like your average anime episode, but it's definitely not ugly. I wouldn't go that far. I was gonna give this a foreign plot, but I feel like there needs to be more than just one or two crazy phenomenal episodes for me to do that. Even though Madara pulling up to the war is still one of the peakest moments in all of fiction. The battles against all the former Kage, the battle against Toby with all the Jinchuriki, that was all pretty good too, man, not gonna lie. Gara confronting his father, I think, is such an underrated moment in the series. The music here gets a three because it's a banger for sure. It's a banger, but it's still only my second favorite song by Nico Touches the Walls. The animation though, bro, my God, man. Oh my God. This battle between Madara and the five Kage is absolutely stunning, man. This is one of the prettiest openings that Shippuden has ever given us. This opening will always serve as the moment where the fourth great Shinobi War really started to get going. Another she put in OP with an amazing visual concept, man. I feel like this is the strong point of Naruto openings, bro. The stylizations here, the symbolisms, the metaphors, man. Definitely the most unique opening in all of Naruto stylistically. It gets an instant foreign animation for me. I also gave this opening a foreign plot because this was, yeah. Sasuke and Itachi versus Kabuto, come on. The battle against Tobi with the eventual Obito reveal, Come on, man. Both of the backstories for Kabuto and Obito, this is probably the darkest section of Shippuden, and it's not just because it's nighttime. Once again, this opening brings me so many great memories of catching up to the series, man. And another, another like little, it's kind of irrelevant, but just another thing that I really appreciate about this section of the anime, the integration of Obito's flashback here and how seamlessly it flows into Kakashi's Anbu side story, which is also kind of like a flashback, where he first met Yamato. My first time watching, I had no idea this wasn't in the manga. I just thought it was part of the regular story. This is just a really cool opening that matches a really cool section of the war arc, man. I love it. I remember this opening for being the point for me where everything in Naruto really just started falling into place, man. Not only are the colors and the transitions in this opening just fantastic, but the structure of this opening. The entire thing is solely focused on this lineage of warring ideologies, essentially the backbone of the Naruto story. Hashirama versus Madara, Kakashi versus Obito, Naruto versus Sasuke. This is the point where everything really started to feel endgame. 
An absolutely loaded section of episodes, man, with a great mix of some of the best action that we get from the entire anime, and also some of the most important lore for the entire story. The song is absolutely fire, but I had to give it just a three here. You know, we, we gotta be a little bit more reserved with handing out these fours. I feel like I've been going crazy. But boy, is this a great theme song for the war arc, man. Everything feels like it's moving at a million miles a minute. You know, people have their gripes with the war, and I get it, I get it. Some of its ideas were pretty half-baked, and it's also greatly handicapped by the wider complaints of the anime as a whole, filler. But damn it, man, this section of the story is just too damn good. Okay, Naruto and his fox demon finally becoming best friends. Mythical shinobi that have been mentioned for hundreds of chapters. Finally, full power, just Battles of epic proportions everywhere, showcasing exactly what top tier shinobi are capable of. Team 7, man. Team 7 on the same page once again, man. Sort of. And also with the manga ending around this time too, this opening really serves as kind of like a celebration of the Naruto series. You gotta love it. The only negative memory I have of this opening is the absolutely terrible placement of the new Chunin Exams filler arc. Like right after Naruto and Sasuke are seemingly dying, but that's not enough to affect the sheer iconic status of Silhouette Man. In so many ways, this could be considered Naruto's apex as a series. This opening is one of them. You know, it's, it's, it's one of them. Despite its best efforts, this opening to me will forever be known as the Silhouette Come Down. However, it's still very solid. It gets a four from me when it comes to animation immediately because of the visuals here. Ooh! I gave it a two in nostalgia though, because again, the tuning exam filler arc, uh, it's, it's not bad, but you, you, you just couldn't have waited a couple of episodes. You couldn't have just waited until the infinite Tsukuyomi was activated. That would have been a much better spot to include this arc. Luckily though, we do still have the final battle against Jubi Madara. Mike Guy, the true MVP, Jesus Naruto, and Antichrist Sasuke, or at least what I thought would have been the final battle until a whole other series was essentially pulled out of Madara's ass thanks to Black Zetsu. It's an opening symbolic of this series winding down, you know, but boy is this such a treat for the eyes, man. Another one of those unwinding openings as the Naruto series comes to a close, man. Again, though, it's the visual concept of this opening that really steals the show here. Showing off so many different characters from the story, interacting with this wisp of energy, which I think is supposed to be a metaphor for the will of fire or something. It's a pretty simple OP. There isn't even any backgrounds here, but that's kind of the point. For the focus to be on the characters here. All the various Infinite Tsukuyomi dreams was an incredibly tiresome watch week to week, and it's honestly a shame that the Itachi light novel adaptation got lumped in with all this, but hey, at least that was great, and that one dream about Nagato, Yakiko, and Konan in the Leaf Village was pretty cool too, in all fairness. Still though, definitely one of the least revisited sections of Shippuden for me. We're picking up the tempo one last time for the final stretch of the war in the entire series as a whole. I feel like this opening doesn't quite reach the heights of something like Guden and Silhouette because again, this is still that unwinding phase of the series, but it's an excellent soundtrack for sure of Kaguya's Rampage as well as the final ultimate showdown between Naruto and Sasuke, basically for the right to become Hokage. A lot of people are probably expecting me to give the plot a one here, because, you know, Kaguya is like some poison to the series. The Otsutsuki isn't the direction that I personally would have gone in to explain the origins of the world and to be the only main villains for the foreseeable future, but their abilities and their character designs are still pretty cool. And not for nothing, I always remember this section of Shippuden just being really pretty, man. Every single week, the animation was knocking it out of the park. And the animation in this opening is my point exactly. What a great last two raw for the series this opening really turned out to be. It's pretty good. Nine, 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 nine,
I said that I prefer Yuri Yura from part one over this opening as a sayonara to the series, and I still stand by that, but this song isn't bad. Anli puts in the performance of a lifetime, and it does match this epilogue section of She Put In rather well. I could give it a two in plot and says it feels like filler. You know, this is by this point, the majority of people were checked out of the series. But nah, man, I think that would just be too dismissive, disingenuous as well. As a long-term Naruto fan, these last 20 episodes are just so satisfying to watch. So many loose plot threads get tied up here. Ships become reality, and even Sasuke gets one last mini arc and another novel adaptation of his time spent wandering the world after making peace with the Leaf Village. The animation in this opening is a bit wonky at times, a bit too loose, if you know what I mean. But again, seeing these time skip versions of all the main characters, it's just too satisfying, man. Watching this now as an adult, when I remember watching part one as a child, it's literally that meme of the guy getting his mother to take him to see something and then getting his girlfriend to do the same thing. That's me when I see this. Well, wasn't wasn't expecting this. I promise this wasn't intentional. All right, so it looks like we got a three-way tie. They all ended up being 13, which sucks. I was kind of worrying that this was gonna happen. Do not worry though, because I have a tiebreaker. Before we get to that though, I got stats, boys. I got stats. First, we have the lowest ranked opening out of all of them. It goes to opening eight from Naruto, part one Naruto that is. It's Remember, which is a shame because that's a flow song. That's actually very surprising. The second lowest ranked opening, it's actually a three-way tie with two Naruto OPs and a Bleach OP. You got opening 14 from Bleach, Blue, opening 11 from Naruto Shippuden, Totsugeki Rock, and opening 18 from Shippuden, Line. The series with the most perfect scores. It was Naruto with five perfect 16s. It's a series with the most amount of theme songs, so I guess it's only fair that it gets the lowest ranked openings, but also a lot of the best too. Second place was One Piece with four. In terms of best music overall, which series got the most amount of fours in the music category, that goes to One Piece with 13. Best animation goes to Naruto with 15 fours in this category. But now, without any further ado, this is how we're going to figure out who's actually the winner here. Anybody that knows numbers know that yes, even though the average score for each of these series are all 13, they aren't all exactly 13, right? So we're gonna be using the decimals to figure out who actually won here. And honestly, man, hey, at the end of the day, regardless of who wins, one Piece, Bleach, and Naruto got some amazing music, man. Coming in at third place, shockingly, with an average of 12.62, it's Naruto. Again, I said it already, it's the series with the most amount of theme songs, so naturally it's gonna have a lot of very good stuff and also a lot of things weighing it down. Second place now, with an average score of 12.93. You ready? You ready? It's Bleach. Let's go. Justice for the Bleach fans. Ichigo stomps Naruto. He's fifth dimensional. Which means that our winner with an average score of 13.17. The only series here to have an average score of 13 without having the round up. One Piece. The One Piece is real. Yeah, I mean, come on. It's, it's, it's One Piece, bruh. It's One Piece. It's One Piece. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. My next ranking video will be sometime in January, so I'll see you guys then. But don't worry, still got more content coming all the way through to the new year. Got some manga to catch up on. So, hey, any Black Clover fans, the manga's back, and we're going to be reading it. Leave a like if I'm all right. Comment below and let me know which series you think has the best theme songs. Leave suggestions on what else you want me to rank. Maybe we could stick with this video format. I kind of like it. It was fun. At the time of recording, it's actually like six hours before Christmas. So, hey, happy holidays to everybody. Happy New Year. If you're watching this in like June, I envy you. It's cold as fuck right now. Um, I'm out, man. Sun time. If it's, if it's me, I apologize. I'm just high. So sometimes I'll just emphasize. I'm just shy, so I really need to emphasize. After this performance, check my vitals, make sure that I'm still.